Well, these are all champions, and now let's see other champions at work. Well, champions indeed, Dennis, but not a champion show dog, what we would call in Lancashire a champion worker, because this, believe it or not, is a police dog. A uh, Rottweiler as opposed to the normal German Shepherd dog, and with me is his handler, PC, Bill Hopkins. Bill, why a Rottweiler? Just a personal thing, Les. Um, I worked at GSD for seven years. During that time, we had two Rottweilers on the section. Uh, I fancied working one. I asked if I could work one. I was given the go-ahead. There he is. So what's the difference between this and the German Shepherd? The reaction's different? Obviously a bigger, heavier dog altogether. Yes, a very, very powerful dog. Uh, he does exactly the same work as the GSD. Exactly. Tracking, searching, crowd control, everything. And he does it very well. Is the weight any problem? What about agility? His agility is superb. He will stand underneath a six-foot scale, just duck his backside and virtually clear it. Stand the other side and come back. No problem. Well, we'll see you working a little later on, Bill. Um, we we'll look, yes. we'll look forward to that very much indeed. So but with me also is the officer in charge of the Sussex Police Dogs, and I should emphasise these are the Sussex Police Dogs, Inspector Bob Terry. Hello, Rose. Bob, what are we going to see this afternoon, uh, and what sort of things do you expect from your police dogs? Uh, what we're going to see this afternoon, Les, is a demonstration in seeing a dog search for a missing person. Uh, a lot of people tend to think that all the people we look for with police dogs are criminals. Well, this is not the case. On many occasions, it is missing persons, children, uh, people from mental hospitals, etc. So all we want the dog to do is search and indicate by barking to the handler that he's located the person. We shall then go on to see a dog chase and detain a man armed with a firearm and the same with a stick. And finally, we shall see a dog chase a person who it turns out to be an innocent person in the end and the dog will just keep him under surveillance. And the chase is going to be with a bare arm? That will be with a bare arm, yes. And that's going to be you? That's going to be me. <laughs> Good luck, Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Bob, guns must be a problem these days. What about dogs' reactions? Well, all general purpose police dogs are taught to chase and detain persons who threaten them with firearms. Police officer with a dog, put the gun down, I'll send the dog. Come on, put then, the gun send down. Him. I'll sort him out. Pow. We're going to see the Rottweiler now, Bob. Uh, what can we expect to see? Well, this is a person who has been identified as a wanted person and is going to threaten the police dog and handler with a stick. So we'll just see what happens. Go on, let him go. I'll take him out. I'll send the dog. Go on, send him there. Send the dog. Go on, send the dog. Go on, send the dog. Have a go at him. Yeah, have a go at him. Drop the stick. Drop the stick. Leave, Bill. Leave us. Inspector Bob Terry, bare-armed and completely unprotected, is about to demonstrate the trust, control and coordination of these super dogs. Well, our thanks to Inspector Bob Terry and the Sussex Police Dog Handlers for an absolutely splendid display. While the police dogs get their man in one way, here's a breed of dog that get their man in a completely different way. We've seen the Newfoundland puppies showing off their beauty points. The black and whites, or as Joe Braddon correctly called them, Lanciers, are gaining popularity with their attractive markings. This is a unique dog in that with the minimum amount of training, they're able to save lives if anyone gets into difficulty in water.
These remarkable dogs are owned by Mrs. Carol England of Nottingham. You start training really uh, by retrieving from the water. This is a thing. Uh, we didn't really train them until they were really, we felt that they were built up as well. Lots of swimming in the trent, fetching out logs and retrieving and coming back on call. Uh, and then we had the boat, and we went out in the boat and fell from the boat, or my husband or son did, fell from the boat, and the dogs straight away went in after them. There was no training of life saving, they automatically did that. And then they go on from that and they want to bring the boat back. And even if you sort of leave them in the water, in the boat on their own, they will jump out of the boat and bring the boat back as well. Which is very useful for bringing the boat back, isn't it? Well, you never know if you're ever down the river or anywhere and someone gets in difficulties, either feels ill or loses an oar or anything, the dogs would be very helpful. I'm always excited about a dog that's useful to man. And quite honestly, the Newfoundland is. I mean, yes. it really... Uh, your dogs are... are giving examples and exhibitions of life saving but these dogs have actually saved lives haven't they there's lots and lots of isolated cases of newfoundland saving lives um, right from the 18th century i could tell you loads of stories actually but even now um, today in france they're used um, on the beaches there and they're trained in pairs um, to life save and they do go up and down the beach and also in australia they're trying them out there in Australia now as well. And they're good temperament. They're noted for good temperaments, aren't they? Yes, they are. Um, they're very easy, very good with children. Um, very quiet normally. And the only time they really get excited is when it's time to come out um, or when someone comes to the house. But most of the time, they're very quiet. Despite their huge size and weight, they're very gentle dogs. But breeders are anxious that they don't become overpopular. The cost of keeping them alone ought to put people off, but if they get into the wrong hands, it could be disastrous for the dog. 